David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have something that I was rather excited to check out, and that is the Montegrappa Game of Thrones pen. Uh, this pen was provided to me by Kenro Industries uh, for review purposes, and we'll be heading back to them when I am done. Uh, first of all, a word of warning regarding Game of Thrones. Uh, I am a big fan of the books as well as of the show, and I'll be discussing topics up through the end of this past season, but uh, any theory crafting is solely my own opinion and not based on any direct knowledge of the upcoming season. I've been doing a good job of staying away from spoilers this off season. Uh, so I'd also ask that if you make comments in YouTube regarding this show, to also please adhere to the no spoilers rule as well. Um, the pen arrives in this box, uh, and I'm really impressed with the packaging for this pen. It has the official Game of Thrones logo on the front, and then it says Montegrappa on the side, and then it has the, um, uh, the f sigils of four houses. It has a lion for House uh, Lannister, it has the three-headed dragon for uh, House uh, Targaryen, it has the Dire Wolf for House Stark, and then it has the Stag for House Baratheon. Then inside, check this out. Most boxes are kind of just like throwaway. Um, by that I mean that they really serve no purpose after you remove the pen, but um, I just think this is just a really sharp looking box. It, um, it has the four sigils from the main box uh, and an additional three houses in this Harlequin pattern. Uh, it has the, uh, the Kraken of House Greyjoy, it has the Golden Rose of House Tyrell, and then it has the Burning uh, Stag of Stannis' Cadet Branch of House Baratheon. Uh, you know, as you know, I'm a sticker for symmetry and alignment. Uh, I kind of like on the front of the box, uh, the pattern on the paper aligns perfectly between the box and the lid. So uh, Montegrappa gets brownie points for that. But uh, on the side, eh, not so much. Eh, not so much. So they get points for what's on the front. Uh, inside, uh, we have the Montegrappa logo, which is embossed in a really nice, soft, padded, velvet-like material. Uh, the bottom comes out. And inside, we have uh, two standard international black cartridges. And then we have the, uh, uh, the standard uh, Montegrappa manual. Uh, and while it's large, uh, it has 90 pages. So you might think that it might use less pages. Few. What? Ah, yes fewer pages. Uh, but that's just because it's written in 10 languages. So uh, it's the same eight or nine pages of info repeated throughout in different languages. Um, what I like though is for this special edition they have a themed cover to the manual which in which they included the sigils I previously mentioned plus two additional. The uh, the sun and spear of, uh, of House Martell and then it has the stag and the lion from uh, Joffrey and Tommen's cadet branch of House Baratheon. Oh, I can't stand the wailing of women. <laughs> I, yes, there are other clips of Joffrey, but I think that that's my favorite scene that he's in. Uh, okay, that was a lot of box uh, detail about a box and a manual, so let's actually take a look at the pen. Um, here is the Montegrappa Game of Thrones, uh, and this is House Targaryen. Uh, the collection represents each of the four key families in Game of Thrones, uh, and the Song of Ice and Fire, you can't forget the books, um, Targaryen, Stark, Lannister, and Baratheon. You know, I found the, the choice to include House Baratheon to be a bit odd. Uh, while the house plays a significant role early in the series, once King Robert died, so did the House Baratheon represented on this pen, which was tied to King Robert. Uh, Stannis, Renly, Joffrey, and Tommen each had their own cadet branches of House Baratheon with their own unique sigils. Uh, well, as I mentioned earlier, Joffrey's and Tommen's were the same. Uh, the only half Baratheon that is still alive is Gendry for all we know. Uh, for all we know, who is, he's actually uh, still out there rowing his boat. Uh, so just for the sake uh, of an interesting pen, uh, I think that uh, a Greyjoy pen would look really cool. Uh, color, colored uh, maybe black and gold with a, a Kraken clip, that would look kind of neat. 
Um, when retailers ordered their stock, I hope they took into consideration the popularity of each house. Um, you know, in my mind, I think that Targaryen and Stark pens will be the most popular, uh, with Lannister trailing a little bit behind. Uh, you know, the Lannister is a nice looking pen, but outside of Tyrion and Jaime, there aren't too many likable Lannisters. I mean, Cersei is an inter interesting character, but I don't feel too many folks are rooting for her to be the ultimate victor. Um, my guess is the Baratheon pen will be the least popular for the re reasons I mentioned earlier. So, uh, you know, Game of Thrones is one of those shows that's significantly overanalyzed, and I feel that these pens will potentially be overanalyzed as well. Um, if there's a mistake on any of these pens, then the community would call it out. And to the best of my knowledge, I really haven't found any errors in regard to lore or canon in regard to the pens, which is nice. I feel Montegrappa has done an excellent job of capturing the, the essence of each of these houses in these pens. Uh, the pen is metal, I'm assuming it's brass, with a shiny lacquer finish. Um, at 51 grams, it's not a light pen. It has a real decent heft to it. Um, the trim on the Targaryen model is bronze. On the Lannister and Baratheon pens, the trim is 18 karat gold, and on the Stark, it's 18 karat palladium. Um, let's start off by taking a look at the finial. Uh, on it, we have the sigil for House Targaryen, the three-headed dragon, along with their house words, fire and blood. Um, there's a lot going on in this uh, sigil, but the, the stamping on the bronze is nice. There's a band at the top of the cap with an intertwined rope pattern. Uh, I feel that fits in well with the overall look of the pen. Now we have the clip. Now, the clips are more representative of, representative of the house sigil. Um, the, the sigil insignia doesn't necessarily lend themselves to being used as a clip, um, but I like that they're included on the finial. On this Targaryen model, it's appropriately the head of a dragon. Um, there's some real nice detail in the dragon, and it's appropriately a western dragon as opposed to an eastern dragon. Um, the clip is different on each of the four models, uh, as you can see here. Uh, the main issue I have with the Targaryen clip is that I find it to be rather tight and a little short. Um, you can see here that it's the shortest of the group uh, and that you, uh, you have to exude a bit of effort to use this clip on a breast pocket and it doesn't really help that it's on the short side so the clip just barely fits in your pocket. Uh, the clip would, could just could have used another quarter inch or so and I think that's all it would have taken in order to make it uh, a little bit more functional. Uh, the cap is straight and has a filigree pattern in red and black on the lacquer. Um, each of the patterns on the four versions of this pen are, are just slightly different. Uh, then we have the cap band, which I think is kind of cool. Um, on the back, it's stamped with the Montegrappa logo, and on the front is the Game of Thrones logo, which looks nice. Uh, you know, other than the trademark symbol, which is, I think, unnecessarily large, you know, my opinion. There is a, a little step down to the barrel, which has a different pattern. I'm not quite sure what the technical name for that pattern is, but it's the same on each of the four models. Um, the barrel tapers down about a millimeter and a half from the beginning to the end. And then the end of this barrel has a piece of bronze. The cap twists off to reveal this very sharp looking steel nib. The nib has some interesting scroll work uh, and a sword. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Um, this pen arrived with a broad nib. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, but I, I find it really to be on the medium side of broad. Uh, the section is bronze, uh, and it has a raised ring at the end of the angle or end of the section, and then angles up to a, a single wide thread, which is not sharp at all. Uh, and, and I like the fact that there's a single thread. That means whenever you cap the pen, the barrel design will always al be in alignment with the clip. Um, there's a single thread on the barrel as well, so the design will remain in constant alignment with the nib. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. It comes with a converter along with two cartridges, uh, and it'll accept any international standard cartridges or converters. 
I do find that this section is very comfortable. Uh, I don't find this bronze to be slick at all. There's a bit of texture to it. Uh, however, the, uh, the platinum of the Stark model and the gold of the Lannister and Baratheon they potentially are a little bit slicker from the picture I've seen. Pictures I've seen, they just look a little bit shinier, which potentially is an indication of uh, of them being a little slicker. But I haven't tested them out personally. Um, the pen is plenty long enough to use unposted, uh, and the cap does post, and it posts securely. But the cap does have some heft to it, and really throws off the balance of the pen. So I prefer to use this pen unposted. Uh, the list price for the Montegrappa Game of Thrones pens are $350, which means that you'll typically see these at your favorite retailer for approximately 20% less, which will be around $280, which I feel is a reasonable price for this pen. Um, it's well constructed. Uh, it has a cool theme, which I feel isn't overdone. Uh, and as you'll see in the writing sample, even though this is a steel nib, uh, the one I have here performs very, very well. Um, I typically like uh, medium nibs, but I'm considering getting this one in abroad. Uh, on top of that, in regard to Game of Thrones, from everything I could see, they got it right. Uh, which, for Game of Thrones fans who can be over-analytical about things Game of Thrones related, it's a big plus. Uh, I really enjoy this pen. Uh, if you're a fountain pen user and a fan of the show, uh, there's really a lot to like about these pens. Uh, I think the big question here is that if I wasn't a fan of Game of Thrones, would I still like this pen? Uh, and I'd say the answer is yes. Um, well, I think the price of the pen is a little inflated, I guessing due to the necessary licensing fees. Um, I I'm actually willing to pay that price. While this one was provided to me by Kenro to review, it is going back, back to them, uh, and I've already reserved one through one of my favorite retailers. Uh, actually, this very model, the Targaryen. Okay. Finally, what do I think will happen in this upcoming season of Game of Thrones? Uh, I'm going to give you three predictions, and these are just my own opinions and not based on any first-hand knowledge or spoilers that I'm aware of. Uh, first of all, that wall is coming down. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Bran's going to pass through the wall, and with the touch of the White Walkers still on him, he's going to break the magic of the wall, allowing the White Walkers to bring that thing down. Um, there is too much foreshadowing in the show and also in the books for that not to happen. And there's also some symmetry in the fact that Bran the Builder created the wall, and Bran the Three-Eyed Raven would cause its destruction. Uh, second of all, Clegane Bowl will happen. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the first half of this season or the second, but if Game of Thrones ends with that Sandor squaring again, off against the zombie mountain, uh, then I will be shocked. Uh, my guess is that Cersei's going to be put on trial. Uh, she'll choose trial by combat, choose the mountain for her, uh, her uh, champion, and then whoever brings her to trial will produce Sandor. And then we will have the battle that all the fans have, fans have been waiting so for since Season 1, Episode 5. I believe that was the episode of the Tourney of the Hand uh, where the brothers Clegane last squared off. Lastly, while he's at the Citadel, I predict that Sam will discover the lost secret of creating Val Valerian steel, which will be necessary in order to defeat the White Walkers. And after that discovery, there will need to be for an expert blacksmith to forge these weapons. And who do we know that's a master blacksmith? who's been building up those iron muscles, rowing around the narrow sea, and that would be Gendry. Um, I have a feeling that we uh, have not seen the last of our pal Gendry. Uh, George R.R. R. Martin typically doesn't leave characters hanging out there like that, so it wouldn't surprise me if Gendry makes an appearance before this series is over. Um, in regard to a comment topic for this video, um, I was thinking that, you know, we all are members of the same house. House fountain pen. So what should our house words be, just like the other houses in Westeros? Uh, I'd like to hear what you would come up with. Um, a rem again, a reminder to, to please refrain from discussing any potential spoilers in the comments section. Uh, that, that would be appreciated. Uh, thank you very much to Kenro Industries for providing this pen for review. Um, it'll be on its way back to them in a couple of days. Uh, the Game of Thrones models will be available at your favorite retailer very soon. Uh, I see some of them already have them in stock already. I know the weather in the Northeast was causing some delays. So now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go.
go with some size comparisons for the Montegrappa Game of Thrones. Um, you know, I have a bunch of blue pens I was going to compare it with. Uh, first of all, here is the Lamy All-Star. Uh, then here is a Visconti Opera Metal Speedboat. Uh, and then here is a uh, Edison Menlo Pump Filler. And in regard to some other pens, here we go with a Sailor 1911 Standard. Uh, then here it is with a Visconti Van Gogh. And this is the old version of the Van Gogh. Uh, this one, rather than the Palladium nibs, actually has a, a gold nib on it. Uh, and then finally, something very special is a Classic Pen LB3. Uh, now, this is a pen, I'll just tease, that you will be seeing coming up in an upcoming episode uh, that will be very, very special. And that's what it looks like in regard to a comparison. So, here we go with the writing sample for the Montegrappa. Game of Thrones. Uh, this is a broad nib, and it is steel. And the ink that I'm using is diamine. Uh, and when I figured out what ink I, I was going to put in this, that was pretty much only one ink that I had that was going in this pen, and that is diamine red dragon. which is appropriate enough for the dragon-themed pen. Uh, this is what the color looks like. Uh, it's a nice deep red. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to like Diamine Matador. It's a little bit darker than that, uh, and, uh, and it's a lot darker than something like uh, Orochizuku Momiji. So uh, it's the darkest of those three. So in regard to a writing sample, Uh, I mentioned that this is a broad nib. Um, it isn't very flexible. You're not going to get lots of line variation out of here. Uh, but I do find that this broad nib is very pleasant. Uh, I was mentioning that I typically uh, write with medium pen or medium nibs, and uh, I, I do enjoy this broad, so I'm considering uh, getting that or getting my pen in a broad. Uh, it has a decent ink flow to it, and then in regard to reverse writing, it writes very, very well. So then in regard to some fast writing, it writes uh, just fine. The feed keeps up just fine. Uh, and I find this broad to be very, very smooth, uh, especially for a steel nib, that it's a very, very pleasant nib. So I'd like to, again, thanks go out to to Kenro for the loan of this pen. It'll be heading back to you here shortly. But uh, there we have the Montegrappa Game of Thrones. Uh, I was really excited to receive this pen, like I said earlier, and uh, it, it really dis didn't disappoint me. So um, while I am uh, disappointed that I have to send this one back, I'll be looking forward to it when I get my own here shortly. So thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you later.